Today, I'm with the author, Star Goody, who um, has written this incredible book, Sheila Nagig, The Dark Goddess of Sacred Power. And I have this beautiful book that um, you can't really tell, but uh, it has so many gorgeous images and space to write. Anyway, Star is also a professor of writing and literature at University of Santa Monica. And you've written a ton of articles and two books, including this one. And you're an award-winning writer as well. And you also hosted this amazing show. The Goddess in Art. The Goddess in Art, right. Star, thank you for being with us today. We're going to talk about the icon of the vulva as the basis of civilization. That article, I just want to say, has 90 images in it. You know, from... The talk that I gave, the images yeah. cut in half. I had 180 images in the talk, but when it went to be published, I cut down the images, but there's a lot. <laughs> and I just have to say, thank you for your generosity of imagery. I mean, your and your series on the goddess was all based on imagery. So, I mean, please share about the importance of this kind of imagery, period. Well, the title of my book originally was Sheila uh, Goddess, Sacred Goddess of Europe in Pursuit of an Image. When I was writing this book, I felt like I was pursuing an image. And, you know, the psyche talks to us and archetypes talk to us through images and symbols, because really the way that human beings first started to apprehend and make sense of reality is through symbols. So imagery and symbols are are very, very important to me. Can you say more about that, uh, how they started with symbols? Can you say more about what you mean? Well, by I just think as human beings, we're trying to understand reality, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to make an effort. And right now we're stuck in this sort of patriarchal mode of cause and effect and reason. I'm all for reason, I'm all for cause and effect. But that's not the only way to interpret the world around you. There's another way if you think of images and symbols, which goes deeper and gives you a more unified sense of things. And I know you talk a lot about wisdom goddesses. Well, this is wisdom to try and go to go deeper because that's an aspect of our nature. And that's what makes us juicy and refreshes us and gives us a sense of the unity of life. Not just if we stay in reason, it's a dry area and it doesn't connect us with the forces of life. So I, I, I know that that is just a way that we have been. In, it's another way to interpret reality and make sense and navigate the world. Right. And so let's look at some of these earliest images um, that you talk about all right, that's the Bloomboss Cave in South Africa. This image is 80,000 years old. And you see on this little piece of ochre that people have scratched double vulvas, double triangles, it's a lozenge. And in my book, I trace images all the way from the Paleolithic to contemporary times because there is a consistency of those, um, the meanings. And so I'm just saying, if you look back into the roots of human beings, they're even Neanderthals are so much about symbolic burials and drawings and cave things. So this is a very early, 80,000 years ago, so a long time ago, Michelle, <laughs> it shows, uh, yeah. I mean, and I can show you a, a, an image from a contemporary artist, uh, Zochi Mevarigaki, who did this whole artwork and it's all these similar kinds of lozenges. It's an archetype, a universal pattern of energy in the human psyche. And would you say the lozenge is very much connected to the pubic triangle? Absolutely. It's a double pubic triangle. Double, well, you said that. That's right. This is a youngster, a mere 40,000 years old. <laughs> and this is the Chauvet Cave, with, if, if you saw Werner Herzog Cave of Forgotten Dreams. Yes. Beautiful documentary on this cave, which was discovered in, I think it was 1994. A rock slide had sealed it off for 20,000 years. And it's wow. so fantastic to think that there's all this cave art out there that hasn't been discovered. Anyway, this is the oldest image in the cave. First, you see the, the, the um, etched black pubic triangle. And later, the bison was added on. But it's the oldest image in the cave, and it's the back of the cave. And it's protecting, you can see there's 
there's a corridor behind it. Mm -hmm. And one of the functions and powers of the vulva, and this is abstract art, you see, the, I mean, the animal is drawn realistically, but the mm -hmm. vulva is an abstraction. It's a concept because that is a symbol, a synecdoche, a part to represent the cosmic creatrix and she's guarding an entrance. And this is a function of the protective power of the vulva is uh, as a guardian and protectress goes all the way up through the shilas. So for millennia after millennia. And in this cave, there are five other vulvas. Actually, there are four other vulvas. Every one is guarding an entrance. So this is an astonishing continuity of the power and uh, function and meaning of the vulva. Right, right. That is, I love that about the article is differentiating between the fact that these animals, and I'm not, I don't have any examples, but there's so many of animals where they show the full animal, but the vulva is this image that is on its own several times, this abstracted concept symbol, as you say. And I thought that was such a great I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just thought that was an amazing distinction. I, I never would have thought of that. See, it, it, obviously these artists could draw with great verisimilitude, but they chose to do the vulva as a, an abstraction, conceptual, it's conceptual art. And that vulva is the source and the mother of all the animals in the cave. Right. This is the most famous Sheila. This is the Kilpeck Sheila, which is in southwestern England in a gem of Romanesque um, architecture, 12th century church uh, on a corbel table. And this Sheila uh, is a merry figure boldly displaying her vulva. The Sheilas are images carved in stone between the 12th and 17th century. So they're medieval figures of females exposing their vulvas on Catholic churches. What are they doing there? How could they, how could they be doing this in this time of incredible misogyny and witch burnings, the lowest ebb of the female race? But here we have these uh, primordial images really of the goddess and her powers. Because you've traced the whole history of the image of the vulva, it just really makes so much sense that you know, this was a very particular time, but the image persisted in this form, as opposed to, you know, abstracted or whatever. You see, um, when you have a timeless pattern of energy and archetype that's in our psyche and images, figures of sexual sacred display are all over the world. Uh, and as Joseph Campbell said, you know, there's, a, there's this universal universality of an archetype, but then it, it gets manifested in a local place, in a particular place. It could be Kali in India. It could be the Dulakai um, right. in, you know, in uh, Oceania. Mm -hmm. And in a particular time and place for a couple of centuries, sacred display was landed and grounded in the image of the Shilinigig. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... So, right, so so the protective, you there's this very cool word, ap, ap, how apotropaic. Is it? apotropaic. Um, so she ends up being sort of as a protectress in that role. Well, the Sheilas are really relatively recent goddesses. I mean, we were just talking about things 40,000 years ago. Yeah. And in my book, I talk a lot of Neolithic things, millennia. So if the Sheilas are a couple hundred years old, but so they're relatively recent, but they're fascinating because they're such a visual image, right? Um, striking, but also because they show the powers of the vulva in a relatively modern figure. And mm -hmm. there's many powers of the vulva, but for me, the quintessent power is that of apotropaea or protection, the ability to attract good and repel evil. And just as the vulva is a liminal thing, it's an entrance, it's a border between inside and out. Mm -hmm. Sheilas are also placed on the borders between inside and out over mm -hmm. a door. Why? She's protecting the entrance. Right. And what, where, where is... This is the Castle Manger Sheila. This is a very late Sheila. She's rather polite. You see her, you can hardly see her. Yeah, I know, she, to the right, right at the bottom here. If you're looking straight... Um, Left, sorry. It's the figure with the cross etched on her abdomen. 
Yes. Arms are raised up in the uh, goddess salutation. This is a Bridget well in oh. Ireland by the uh, this river, very, very hard to find. I had to have these lads in a pub. You go, oh, you'll never find it. And they took me there. <laughs> So uh, this is a healing well that is used to this very day. It's again, it's a Bridget well, and there's a river behind it. So this is a late 17th century Sheila, but uh, anyway, this is the Castle Manger Sheila, and Sheila's are often, not often, but can be found from time to time by water and holy wells. Mm -hmm. Here she is also, I guess, the, in a in the Medusa form. Would you say she's in an apotropic? Um, yes. Okay. So once again, this isn't a Sheila Nagig. This is no. the going on Medusa. Right. Because she's manifesting her sacred powers in that form. This is like fourth century BCE. So she's about 2,500 years old. And yeah. she is in the Artemis temple on the island of Corfu. And what is she doing? She's protecting the entrance. Yeah. And Medusa's power were in her face. And actually, her vulva is in her mouth because she gives birth to her children through her neck. So her powers are um, in her face. And as you know, Medusa, she could turn you to stone. She was very protective. Anyway, she's wow. a guardian of the gate and she's about eight feet tall. She's huge. She's um, and she's, uh, she's in a museum there now, but she was guarding, in, she's on guarding the uh, entrance to the Artemis temple. So she is a, antecedent of the Sheilas, but it's the same powers. The same powers, right. And the um, I should have snagged that image of the, the woman who's lifting up her dress and to the to the div to the devil and scaring him. <laughs> right, right, right. The devil right? deterred. The <laughs> devil deterred. It's from La Fontaine. It's an interesting thing because sometimes witches are supposed to be consorting with the devil. But here the devil is in awe of uh, the powers of this of the sacred vulva. The tale was the, the devil was bothering all these people in the village what to do. Get a woman out there, do sacred display, and the devil flees because the devil, the devil is no match for the powers of the sacred vulva. Right, and there are instances in history where women have, they didn't have weapons to defend themselves, but they actually lifted their skirts to scare soldiers away. Exactly. Well, there's uh, uh, the Greek myth, Bella Farm. I forget how to say his name. But anyway, uh, that's a, uh, he, he, the women lined up and uh, repelled the army. Uh, certainly, and I would point out to you the Portland Sheila in our own time. I don't know if you remember her, the woman in Portland who sat in sacred display in the streets of Portland during uh, all the riots with Black Lives Matter. And remember, she stripped and she sat there in a posture of sacred display. Oh and my God. the police turned away and she disarmed the riot. I remember. Oh my God. Why didn't I include that here? That's amazing. Thank I mean, people said, oh, it's lewd or it's this. Or that. No, you don't know the sacred powers of the vulva. So I would just point that out. Yes. It's a power that just happened in our own time in oh the last God. several months. Right. It's not just some sort of myth that might have happened. It actually did happen recently. Right. That's incredible. So another power is the fertility aspect. And this is you. When this is me a zillion years ago. This is the <laughs> Sarkin Sheila, very, very remote place. When I was trying to find it, workers said, ah, kill Sarkin, you might as well go to Timbuktu. But anyway, <laughs> I found it. And this is an interesting Sheila because she only has a head, a vulva, and two legs, but you could see you could reach. Um, the Sheilas have different powers. They have powers of life and death and protection, but also of the powers of life are that they, they can be healing. It's good luck to rub the vulva. You can see how much she's rubbed, and you can yes. see the Castle Manger Sheila, the one we saw by the Bridget Well. Um, people rub them to this day, if they're in reach, they rub them because stone dust is uh, healing. And of course, touching the vulva like that is uh, a sacred act wow. and it's healing. And many Sheilas, uh, some Sheilas are high up on towers and or churches and you can't right. really um, touch them. But the ones that have been touched, uh, different churches like Bally Vorney and 
uh, you can see that they're rubbed and people uh, sometimes go there on special days and another Sheila, the Behi Sheila in Sligo is on a private farm and people to this day offer candles, go there to help them uh, be fertile. Our women in Ireland used to pray for them not to have any more babies. <laughs> To this day, people will still make offerings of, to the Sheilas. Incredible. So the Sheilas, though they did go through a lot of destruction, right? They're still yeah. Well, there was at that time or the 12th and 17th century, um, and then through different political and social forces, their era ended in the church uh, through Reformation, you know, um, the, the Catholic Church quit being tolerant of them. So mm -hmm. they quit being built. And so they tried to destroy many of them, but some of them were out of reach to destroy, you know, being mm -hmm. high up on a tower. Or right. sometimes the people took them and hid them. Right. Right. They've been found and buried uh, next to churches or something. The cover of my book, The Rahara Sheila, she was just discovered in like 1991. It was this, this one right here. That picture was taken like 10 seconds up. They were cleaning it up and there was, it's a, um, it's a, this, this stone um, was face down and they had just, was in the churchyard, they were doing a cleanup and they just pulled it up and they took that picture right there. And the, the uh, curator of the Roscommon Museum gave me the picture and let me use it for my cover. So it had just been pulled up. So this shield was just discovered wow. like 20 years ago. Isn't that great? Yeah. Um, I love this, um, the braids she has. And and this one, oh no, not sorry. Um, oh shoot, there's another one that has those flying braids. Yeah, that, that's, that has Celtic knots, right. And this is another Sheila and you can see she has rosettes and some of it, it's hard huh. to see, but uh, that's another motif, which you didn't pull it up, but it's connected to the Gunstrup cauldron, which, uh, in other words, this is part of the Celtic revival. Okay. A lot of Irish masons were doing, this is maybe 14th, 15th century, and they were connecting it back to Celtic knots and Celtic motifs. So they both have the flying, the, uh, she has the flying braids and the other, the Rahara Sheila, very thick braids coming down the side of her. So these are ancient motifs incorporated. Right. The Celtic connection. Um, and then you talk about a uh, precursor, perhaps that goddess, the hag goddess. What's her name? Kaliak. Kalia. Right. Well, the Sheilas are hags. I mean, yes, exactly. I mean, if you look at them, some of them, uh, all the Sheilas have different personalities. Okay, like this is the Moat Sheila, the one we saw over the door, and it's a close up. Oh. She's monstrous. She's a monstrous figure. Yeah. And they're created by different artists, so they have a different flavor to them, but all Sheilas have a fierce display of their vulvas, a sacred display. So you see she's doing that. And this Sheila, um, you see that she has shriveled breasts and a monstrous face. Uh, she's a Kaliak too, because you see her left eye is blind. Uh -huh. and, and not only that, just went one more thing, she might be pregnant. She has a pregnant looking belly. So here she has the forces of life and death right. in one body and her unity. Right. And, but this Kaliak was a motif that precedes the. It's the, it's Sheila's. the divine that... hag. Right. It's divine the divine hag. hag. Okay. Um, the divine hag. Yeah. Of the Celtic culture. Celtic. Because the. Ireland was never invaded by the Romans. So they never had their culture usurped in a way that England and other places in Europe. So there was more of a continuity. Wow. So the Sheila's, I mean, certainly I touch on this in my book of mm -hmm. mythological connections and sculptural connections and the Celts worship the big head. You can see the big head on this Sheila. So there's a continuity just like there was Bridget of the sacred holy waters and later she becomes Saint Bridget. You know, the goddesses transform into saints as the church right. in act of, you know, syncretism, like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put the Sheilas up and bring the pagans in. So she would be a recognized figure in Celtic culture. Right, right. And so that's the interesting thing is that it's clearly 
a Celticly dominated um, trend, let's say, but she does show up at this in that same time period in England, in Spain, in France. Is that right? Not Spain, maybe but France. I would, I would say she's not in in. I would say she's just in the British Isles in Ireland. Oh, okay. Now you know that there were Celtic parts of Scotland, Wales, of um, in and the Celts were in England. Okay. But of course, there are display figures all over the world. Display, and, yes, right. And, and there were precursor figures in uh, along northern France and, and some in Spain, which led to the. Uh, that was a the creation of the Sheilas is part of a blend. Of, this is my considered uh, view. It's okay. a blend of the indigenous Celtic traditions with these other forces of. Um, on these other churches, these precursor display figures. So we saw see that smaller figure of the Kilpeck church and the Kilpeck one that is the most famous. She's this this figure here is a far cry from the Kilpeck. She's bigger. She's more menacing. You know that she has um, she's a, she's a couple centuries after. So the Kilpeck Sheila, her uh, she's on a corbel, which is where a lot of these. Um, display figures where they were on corbel tables around churches mm -hmm. uh, as uh, figures because the populace was illiterate. So on this, corbels are uh, supporting architectural features. There's like 80 figures on this church. There's 80 corbels around and this is the Sheila. So, so she evolves and in the end, to me comes the true Sheila, which is the Irish Sheila, which is bigger and more fierce. Okay. So you mean like, uh, no. Okay, this is an English figure. Okay. So you, I mean, not every Sheila is exactly the same, but this is an English figure and she has the biggest clitoris of any Sheila. So you see, <laughs> this, she has this huge vulva. She yeah. has big breasts and she says this very smile. She's in a church in England and, you know, quite pleased with herself. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, to me, she's not as fierce, but she's, no. she's slightly monstrous. I mean, even though I love, I think they're beautiful to me. Yeah. Uh, so they have different flavors. Okay, this Sheila is the Tulavan Sheila. This is in Cork. And she's a Sheila called a castle hag. These are called castle hags. And uh -huh. she's way up, way up on the um, church. I mean, it's a tower. It's a castle. Oh, I don't know, 50 feet up. And they were inserted sideways, sideways on the coin or corner in order to protect. The idea was if uh, an enemy or an evil force came, they'd see the Sheila and be repelled. And many Irish chieftains put these Sheilas as an assertion of territory. So she's connected with the goddess of sovereignty in that way. Is this a claim? This is my territory. This is the Sheila and she's protecting it. So these are called castle hags. Okay. And this Sheila you see is very much in a very squatty frog goddess position. Yes. Very sculptural and rounded. This is a beautiful Sheila. Yeah. I um she reminds me of the ones in your book. Oh, there's a bunch of others that are have that frog, well, display figures. Um, she's really squatting in a frog posture. They're all squatting, but you know, she's mm -hmm. very marked. And then uh yeah, I want the dancing one. I know you've got I think I have one of yours that is dancing. I'm not sure. I don't think, I, or maybe I don't. This one, she's sort of, no, she's not dancing. This is a Caban Sheila. And uh, she has a very tumescent ripe vulva. And her, her, it's almost like she has an upper vulva, like a Medusa. Yes. Mouth. yes. Her lips. She's got quite a set of li upper and lower lips, right? right? Yes. And even her chest has a lozenge. Uh, Design. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She has a tattooing. She has a tattooing across her forehead too. Mm, right. And she's in cabin. Now she's in the cabin museum. Okay. She's quite a. So so here you see, uh, in a way, it could be emaciating rib. The chevrons are top of the lozenge pattern. Mm -hmm. So you see, they all have different characters and flavors, but they all have to have a displaying their vulva. Right, yes. And um, so was it the, what 
was it the image of the vulva that got you first or was it the sheilas that got you toward the seeing the the largeness of the importance of this image it was the sheilas first 19, 19, 1984 someone showed me a picture and said oh i think you would like this and i i just was mesmerized like what what is because they were so powerful and it was such an anomaly why are these on christian medieval catholic churches what are these powerful female figures i mean this is a supernatural figure this is not an ordinary female right so she is a goddess and uh what are they doing there so i fell into it and began a long journey amazing amazing um is there anything we haven't quite covered about your all of this? I just want to make sure. This is what I want to say. If okay. people go to my website, they'll see my latest article, The Icon of the Vulva, A Basis of Civilization. Mm -hmm. So it grew out of my Sheila work that really um, the great archaeologist Maria Gimbuta said when she was decoding everything over the millennia, what struck her was not the metamorphosis metamorphosis or change of all these symbols or images but the continuity yes. and so what i have traced through all of that is this icon of the vulva and i call it a basis of civilization because it's not an androcratic warrior culture based on elites and hierarchy and warfare but rather something that talks about a unity and a wholeness and what's a true civilization, something that has an equality between the sexes, that has non-material values, that has a, a pleasure in life and aesthetic achievements and tracing through these goddess cultures that were there before the patriarchal overthrow 5,000 years ago shows that this is, the, uh, this is the kind of culture we wanna live in. This is a civilization and, uh, and there's always some thread of that because the goddess really is nature and cosmos and all of life and much as the boys might want to do away with it there's no such thing as life without her that's right and i i love that you said that in the article um also that you know she went underground for a while but she never died out this image you know the goddess and the vulva are just they they're not dying they're not going anywhere no, and they're reviving in the great psychic event of the 20th century is the return of the goddess, because we have to have it. And here with our uh, pink pussy hats, <laughs> and females are connected to felines in that Chauvet cave behind her. Yes. Are lions. So there's a connection between the vulva and the lions <sighs> and felines going that far back. Wait, that is brilliant. Let me just see if I can get that image up again. Because uh, I don't think you can see it. It's in shadow. It's a, you'd have to go. There's other ones. Oh, the lion. Yeah, that image wasn't so great. Right. You see the bison, but not the lion. Right. But also, but there's a panel of lions behind her. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, see, this image. This is supposed to be a lion right here, right? On on the on to the right. On the other side, but also there's a panel of lions. A panel, right. right. Oh, I love that you brought that connection in. That makes so much sense. Yeah, I I have to say that the um, the pink pussy hat uh, revolution was such a. It happened. It coincided for me with the whole sort of reconnecting to my vulva. It was like such a oh, big bravo, deal. bravo. Because this <laughs> yeah. whole idea that the pussy oh he's a pussy he's weak oh really I'd like to see you take that pounding insect give birth <laughs> and then. It's, you know, they're pretty strong. I mean, a football player would be on his knees, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing stronger, you know. More you are so, <laughs> you're so right. You're so right. I even, I also found out that the the uterus, um, which is not the vulva, but they're connected. They're, uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're package in the yoni, uh, the meaning of the word yoni. Uh, the, the uterus and the heart are actually made of the same kind of muscle tissue. Wow. Isn't that interesting? And they're the only two organs that share that kind of tissue in the whole body. And I'm yeah. trying to find out more about that, but yeah, pretty fascinating. Um, well, Star, thank you so much. This has been so wonderful. And, and the reason also that I'm tying this in with, I, you know, as the wisdom goddess is because, you know, um, it's so important to know that our full power and our wisdom, you know, is connected to the vulva. And, 
you know, like they are connected. And so, and she being, you know, being the, the, the goddess of life and death, I mean, that includes everything. So I I, think is, is you can project any kind of images. I mean, interpretations, but it's the power of the image. Just look at the Sheila and it's a meditation on wholeness. Right. Interpretations rise and fall. The image remains powerful, eternal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we can't see her there. Um, well, thank you again. And um, I'm going to put the links to for people to get access to this incredible article and do get the book too, if you want to be completely immersed in all the sacred display images around the world and how potent and powerful this image is, like in every single culture, as you said. It's incredible. Well, thank you. The only link you need is to my website. It's all okay. there. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you.